doing something that no person's done before. That's what really gets me out of bed every day. Um, so no, no teams won uh, the World Cup back to back. No captains won the thing back to back. You know, to be the first team and first players to do that, that's, that's what gets me out of bed. Very, very few people that retire having nailed everything they want to nail and finish when they want to finish. Oh, that's pretty rare in sport. But the fact that we've got another chance to play the World Cup, the reward's huge, but perhaps the disappointment's uh, big as well, but you've got to risk all that to, to get those rewards. The All Blacks in South Africa are back at Alice Park, Johannesburg. The Springboks today have claimed the underdog's tag, which they love to do. Well, it's a cold winter's afternoon here in Johannesburg, and the clash of the old foes is going to kick off at 5 o'clock. I thought a little bit about that I won't get to tour here again, but I'm just grateful to have a, uh, another chance to play in Alice Park. It's one of the great places to play. So I'm just trying to enjoy a Springbok test, you know, because it's one of the ultimates. Are the All Blacks going to carry on their steady march of form and ability, or can Skulkberger and the players around him try and knock one over Richie for the last time that he plays here at Ellis Park? Uh, Richie McCaw has won more test matches than I've played. He's created a culture of winning. You know, you watch him play and there's their ruthlessness. You know, I think he demands of his teammates perfection. Everyone wants to beat them. There's a lot of psyche involved with international sport. We draw a, often draw a few similarities to get inspiration through the guys that go to war or, or go into battle. And that's what those guys back in wars and that were fighting for, was for their sense of identity and who you were. I always wondered myself whether if I was in that situation whether I'd have enough courage and that yeah you know, you'd like to think you would but you know you talk about being brave or having courage well it's pretty easy to do that because you're going home every day. It's one of the toughest tests you play, physically, and just how hard it is to win. There's a huge amount of respect between the Springbok players and the, and the All Blacks. Incredible test match. South Africa with a three-point lead, and bravery from the All Blacks. 
And Taylor to the front. It's a variation and a score. Richie McCollum, Kokali Wall Blacks. 2017 up with uh, you know, three or four minutes to go and you lose 27 20. I mean, that, that, that hurts. He's a complicated rooster. On the field's his arena. It's where he's most comfortable. He just has to play. He doesn't have to be anything else other than a rugby player. And I think because of that, we see him being more, more himself. Off the field, I think, at times, it's a struggle for him. He's a reluctant hero. I would say, as a younger fellow, I was a bit shy. I wouldn't be the type of guy that was easiest to get to know, and you know, that still wasn't easy. And I think within a team, that's something I've had to work on. I don't just bowl on in, you know, like some people have the ability to do, and just chat away. At it. And, and I guess that's just probably the natural shyness I've always had. <laughs> A retired top rugby referee is crying foul over All Black captain Richie McCaw's match-winning try against the Springboks. Richie McCaw leads the All Blacks next week to the Rugby Championship decider against Australia, where, of course, he's no stranger to accusations of cheating. And former Wallaby captain Andrew Slack has been watching footage of this controversial try, illegal or not. My view would be that, you know, potentially it was illegal. It did break that law as it's written in the game, but... You could probably argue a case either way, but you know, as I say, it probably was illegal. Well, it had to happen, didn't it? A South African journalist and former referee have called the move that led to Richie McCaw's match-winning try illegal. If you want to get really picky, at the front of the line-out, box hooker Bismarck Duplessis was offside, another forward, Adrian Strauss, was offside, and Ruan Pina was offside, trying to tackle Richie McCaw. The real grey area in, in rugby is the breakdown, attack and D, and... Having a really good knowledge of, of that is, is pretty key and a good knowledge of how to have an influence. You're not breaking the laws or anything, it's just the interpretation of what angles are acceptable. If you play by the laws, you'll amount to nothing. To be a great number seven, you have to be prepared to step outside the laws of the game. Everybody would say to me as a ref, how, how do you let him away with so much? How come he seems to get away with so much? And, you know, my response is he just seems to know where the line in the sand is. He'll study the referees that he, he's going to have and he'll know what he may or may not be able to get away with. Half of you says, wow, that was amazing. And the other half, particularly for an Australian, goes, how is that cheating bastard getting away with that when we're not? You know, and he's got this angelic face and this big smile and all that sort of stuff and speaks to them very respectfully and you think, you smarmy bastard. Just before the game, I'll write down exactly the things I need to know out in the field. Um, writing down the same things most weeks. The first thing I put was, was start again and get involved early. The next point I have is our uh, work rate. So a big part of my game is uh, having a crack at their ball. You know, so whether it's your feet or your hands in there, you, you get in there and you try and uh, slow it up best you can, legally. Another one's always thinking about get up and go and change gear. So that's sort of how I'm going to play. And then 
I always have one calm, clear and decisive. So it's obviously as a captain you want to see be calm, be clear about what we're doing and be, be really decisive. So don't sort of be wishy washy yes. and presence. So rather than head down, you're up and you're big. So it's a, a physical but also a mental presence, you know, like where your eyes are, um, how you talk to the ref, how you engage with your mates, that has a real mental presence. And then the last couple is just play and enjoy. And that's where I write down GAB at the end too. I had this training diary and I was quite proud of the fact that I'd been picked for a trial. I was talking to my uncle about it and showing him and he goes, well, do you want to be an All Black? Oh well, yeah, of course I do. Not thinking it was anything more than a bit of a dream. Do you want to be an All Black? Let's write down a plan, mate. He goes, well, write down how you would get there. So I started putting down, well, he made New Zealand under-19s and 99. Under-21s? 2001, looking at New Zealand, New Zealand Colts. Colts, and then you might get into the Canterbury A team in 2002. 2003, Crusaders. And then after 2003 World Cup, be some guys moving on from the All Blacks. There's going to be gaps in the roster. He goes, well, if you're going to have this line after the All Black, you don't just want to be an All Black, you want to be a great All Black. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was a bit embarrassed about uh, <laughs> even writing that. <laughs> I just wrote GAB at the bottom. He's always been pretty good at rugby, off to the target boys high and once again he was a wee bit small. He always wanted to take after me to play number eight. Um, <laughs> but he needed a school to play there. The boys played seven. But he wasn't good enough to get in the first 15 there as a, as a number eight. He's a bit small. So he got to play seven and that's the position that we, we can see him playing in now. And he's doing a pretty good job of it, I think. No, it's not too bad. <laughs> the 1998 National First 15 Rugby Championships and look out for Richard McCoy. There was a game between Rotorua Boys and Otago Boys High School. And my role at that time was academy manager. So I thought I'd go out and have a look at the game and see if there's any uh, talent there that we should possibly talk to and maybe get to come to Canterbury. Good charge again by McCaw. Didn't take too long to realise there was an exceptional talent in Rico. I think it hit the, the face of this player here, McCaw. But what I saw that day was a young player who was totally courageous. Uh, he was into everything. It's a try. McCaw goes over. Well, has a number seven. Richard McCaw had a very good game tonight. I remember going back in and saying, look, I don't care how much it costs, there's a guy out there we need to, um, we need to get here. When I left school, I got the rugby scholarship, and some of the advice I got was, why are you wasting your time doing that? And you'd be better off focusing on getting a good degree. And I sort of got the impression people thought I was wasting you know, talent or whatever, uh, chasing sport. When he first arrived, he was not the most talented athlete by any stretch of the imagination, but what he did have was a massive desire to improve. Yeah, I guess we had a similar drive. You know, just being there wasn't good enough. He was getting all these turnovers, and I could see all the, the older guys, especially the Fords, were getting really annoyed with this, this guy who was not a very big guy, and he was new to the team, and he was just being a real menace at training. At one stage, I can remember Todd Reventhorn and, and Scotty Robinson saying, look, you've got to do something about this guy, otherwise we're going to belt him. And uh, I said, well, if you belt him, I'll belt you. And then I went over to Richie and I said, for goodness sake, son, just let them win a couple of balls at the breakdown, would you? Look at that desperate scrap for the ball there. They've ripped away, who's that? Nice, McCaw. Richard McCaw. He's a brilliant young player. Blair McCaw goes on his own try. And another name in the spotlight, Richie McCaw. And McCaw's going to get another. I must have played about eight of nine games and played pretty well. Like, I knew I was new kid on the block. Richard McCaw didn't arrive on the national scene. He exploded onto it with a hat-trick of tries in Canterbury's demolition. I've got Richie McCaw. His name has really been bandied about down these parts. And 
think this young man has a big future in rugby. Well, the baby face of Richard McCaw, someone we'll see a bit of, perhaps. I just got the pass and yeah. uh, got across the line. Yeah, very modest. <laughs> uh, I was aware that there was talk that maybe, uh, you know, you're in the all-black frame, but never really wanted to believe it. Mum and Dad picked me up and we went round to some of their friends' place and we sat and listened on the radio to the All Blacks being announced. And as soon as I got named, their friends had a bottle of champagne, they popped the cork on. I was like, gee, that's pretty presumptuous. Captain Anton Oliver's test side features only two first-time All Blacks, including open side flanker Richard McCaw. I was playing alongside guys that a couple of years earlier I was watching at school on TV. They were the heroes. Those guys I probably would have gone up to to get an autograph. To get out in that field, especially in a test match, is uh, going to be something quite unreal and, you know, a, a dream come true, really. It was all very well being named as an All Black, but you never called yourself one until uh, you got on the field. is absolutely electric here. And Andrew Martins gets us going. I remember the whistle went to kick off and I knew I could relax now. At least I've been on the field as an all black. Whatever happens now, it doesn't matter. And here's the new cap, McCaw. Runs into the two back row forwards, McCaw and Robertson. The all blacks surge back into the game with five second half tries. Over the loudspeaker, they said the man of the match was me. Man of the match, the 20 year old. I was like, did I hear that right? I'd heard that, I was like, crikey. <laughs> it felt like I was on a fast track. You look back now, and yeah, it was really quick. Do you still look back and sort of wonderment at the fact that you started with the Colts and at the end of the season you're an All Black? Yeah, well, it's beyond the sort of wildest dreams back and uh, even even in June, July, you know, I, well, I was trying to trying to get myself into the NPC team and try and get some game time there and to be on All Black tour at the end of the year is, uh, was way beyond what I ever expected. It was 2002 and I'd made the All Blacks by this point and we were leaving the farm and I was cleaning up my bedroom. I found the bit of paper and uh, pulled it out and on the bit of paper it had all these uh, milestones to become an All Black and that was meant to be in 2004 I think it was. Whereas in 2001 I was already an All Black having ticked most of it off. I was like wow. So well, the only thing left on there is to become a great All Black. <laughs> I guess in the back of my mind, I had these ideas of what a great All Black should be. And I wrote GAB, Great All Black. You're on. Thank you. Welcome to the 177th edition of this great rivalry, Australia versus New Zealand. Bledisloe won first of two test matches in the Bledisloe series. The Bledisloe Cup is back in town. The All Blacks have held the Bledisloe Cup since 2003. They've won the rugby championship for the last three years. They've won 13 of the 19 titles since 1996. We are talking about a very special rugby team, folks. But as the Wallabies know, to be the best, you have to beat the best. So that's the challenge in 2015 for Australia. The, great, so the All Blacks are out there lapping it up. The great thing about Richie McCaw, he's got so many more experienced players next to him. Oh, 
could be, yes. Seeing the Wallabies jumping around after the game, like I stood out there just to take the medicine because I knew it would fire me up for this week. And that's the right thing to do, you know, you respect the opposition, they won, and that's what sport's about, but all it was doing was sharpening the axe for this week. I've been pretty dirty all week, to be honest, uh, about the result. I hate losing. I really hate it, and I hate it even more losing to the Wallabies. <laughs> and, uh, like Saturday night after the game, I was like in bed just thinking about the things I should have done better, or why didn't I do this, or whatever. I think the longer you've been around and the, the few losses you have, you remember them a lot, and. Yeah, 140 something games, and that was my 15th loss. Like, uh, it doesn't happen very often. I became captain in 2006. Felt we had a great team in terms of the personnel, and we'd been winning right up to that point. So I thought, well, this is my chance, my moment as a player, and for this team to, to deal with all the things that had in the last World Cups would be pretty disappointing. I thought this is going to be the, the moment. Le rugby est depuis toujours divisé en deux camps. Il y a les All Blacks et il y a les autres. The All Blacks are proving a big draw card in France. The All Black front row is widely regarded as the best in world rugby. Cette équipe est née pour gagner. Qui pourra résister à cette marée noire, emmenée par le talentueux capitaine Richie Macko, élu meilleur joueur du monde la saison dernière. The opportunity also to end 20 years of anger. La Nouvelle-Zélande se présente en grand favori. Many are saying the only thing that'll beat the All Blacks is the All Blacks. 20 years without a Carter gets this second period underway. France, 40 minutes away from elimination in their own World Cup. And New Zealand, 40 minutes away from booking their semi-final place against England. 30 minutes to go, we're ahead in the game. And then they got one chance to strike. Ray stepping over the 22, needs support. Yannick Jusian! Jusian for France! Well, that's one that'll be debated at home in New Zealand by everybody. Bang, a hit on the scoreboard. Wow, this is not really happening the way it should. Well, you can sense the change in atmosphere. She's heart attack city. Well, some may say it's an omen. Today, looking forward to a semi between England and France. Who would have ever believed it? The start of this World Cup. Not many in New Zealand. Not many in the world. You know, I got down to the last two or three minutes, I was like, Jeepers, what do you do? Do you say we need a drop goal? We hadn't really talked about how to do a drop goal. A few guys started just looking at each other. This isn't the way it's meant to be. That's when I started to worry. It's all or nothing for New Zealand. And time has run out. Again. 
it was just disbelief, you know, how has this happened? You know, what's happened? Well, Richie McCaw, you come straight off the pitch. That must be a terrible blow for you. What's your immediate reaction? Oh, mate, I'm not sure. Uh, it was a hell of a test match. Um, yeah, I lost words, really. Uh, yeah, mate, uh, just one of those days that uh, you want to forget. Well, I can remember the feeling in the changing room very vividly. Like it's the worst changing room I've ever been in in my life. And I've been in a couple. Nobody was talking. It was complete silence. And some players were sitting facing the back of the cubicle. Didn't want to have eye contact with anybody else. The press conference was probably 30, 40 minutes after the final whistle. You're looking at 20 television cameras and probably 200 media. Everybody in the rebound with the right strategies in the group. And they worked extremely hard on those strategies and they've been successful in test match record over a long period of time. It was a horrible place to be. It was get us out of here as soon as we can. I've got to say, I thought we were ready, the boys were ready to play today and we're just going to put it out there. And, and I remember, and it, it looks really bad, but there's the, the one shot that went everywhere is when I went like, like that. And I hit all the clicks, and I thought, bugger, I've just given them something that I wish I hadn't. Today it is devastation, tomorrow bitterness, maybe even anger. Now, this was, we were told, the best prepared All Blacks team ever, but unfortunately for them, they've scored the worst ever finish in All Black World Cup history. There is little sympathy or understanding. The three Cantabrians were in charge of the All Blacks and they stuffed it up completely. Careers hinge on World Cup results. Has anyone fallen on the sword yet? No, Ginny May, which is quite surprising. Richie McCaw, he's the All Black captain and he's got a front. You just can't perform that poorly without some ramifications. Success is a lousy teacher. And, and so 2007 was, you know, a watershed moment for his leadership. And it exposed the weakness that um, sometimes performance alone wasn't enough to lead your men. And that became a... We place great emphasis on clear thinking under pressure rather than just thinking positively. Uh, think about pilots. They don't prepare just for good flights. They prepare for the, the bad weather, the difficulties, mechanical and all those sort of situations. Uh, that's what we'd expect them to do. For sports teams, if you deal with those moments better than other people, then that's a huge advantage. Uh, Richie's at the upper end of the scale in terms of his inquisitiveness, uh, his curiosity. I think these are some of his most important features. So he could see pretty quickly that there was huge benefit in exploring this space, the dark side, what can go wrong. And in those circumstances, how do you operate? Either you see them as a, a threat, or you see them as a great challenge. And people like Richie thrive on that. They get that straight away. When I sometimes feel like the weight's getting on my shoulders and you get tense about it, just take a moment to go, well, I want to test myself. And that's actually quite uplifting. 
the guys with planting gates will feel pressure too. If we come and bring it, then they're going to go, well, how do we deal with the pressure? So you put the pressure on them. That's the exciting part of sport, you know. With the Bettersloe Cup on the line and this being the last test before the start of the World Cup, a record-breaking appearance for Richie McCaw. It'll be his 142nd test match and that's more than any other player anywhere. I want it really badly this week. Uh, give me my last game in New Zealand. Play at Eden Park, which, to be honest, is probably the favourite place to play as an All Black. Some pretty special memories there. I find it really hard to believe what I'm seeing. For about the two hours beforehand, I'm just shaking. <laughs> I can't even hold a drink. I'm shaking that much. I still shake. Yeah. I'd love to finish off as an all-black with the bitters in the cupboard. And, you know, in October, it'd be nice to have that cup too. You know, I'd be lying if I said it doesn't mean a hell of a lot. Rally of a number seven, when the opposition's got the ball, your job is to get it back somehow or, or make it tough for the opposition to play. And if you do that, you're going to frustrate the hell out of them. I've been against number sevens that frustrate the hell out of you. He's always thinking about what's happening next, and that's a quality that you see in the great players. Uh, he's not having to see it happen and then go and react. It's about OK, it's unfolding, what am I going to do here? Bang, he's in the right place, he's anticipated it. Good players and the good players that have instinct will straight away see the picture of that's probably where the collision's going to happen, so I'm going to go straight there. And so you're arriving uh, as the tackle's happening. That's how you beat opposition. Rather than being the fastest, you actually run the shortest distance. will be that. That is all she wrote as the All Blacks retain the Blatterslow Cup. Never, ever seen that at Eden Park before for a player. It's pretty cool that 40-odd uh, thousand people hung around and Gave you a clap for the last game in New Zealand. Yeah, it was, I don't even want to talk about it now, but a bit of a lump in the throat. It's moments like that that make everything you've done seem worthwhile and you feel proud of that. And, uh, and because of that, there are a few emotions. Probably in the past, I would have just suppressed all them and just been. And I still was pretty straight, really. Um, but uh, I knew it was probably didn't hurt to show a little bit. Gemma, you look beautiful. Can I ask, what's the plans with hockey this year? Um, we've got the Olympic qualifier in June, and that's our next pinnacle. So, hoping to qualify then for Rio. That's the plan. Hey, 
over a lot of the rugby career, I never shared a lot with, with anyone. I think that's one of the things I've appreciated lately is being able to share some of that stuff when things are going good or bad. You can actually, I don't know, halve the problem by <laughs> whinging. <laughs> You need a whole rack. No, but you might as well cook both of them. The pretty cool thing about Gemma is she understands what it takes to be a top sports person. I've got a good pillar. Huh? I play hockey for the Black Sticks, have for the last eight years. Before the last Olympics, I got a message on Facebook of all places. Denise just said good luck in London. I actually forgot to, to reply to him because we were so busy. And then we lost the semi-final, which was devastating, you know. And then he wrote a really nice message, basically saying that they'd been in a, in a similar position um, in, in 2007, being knocked out of the World Cup. And um, he knows that deep, um, you know, devastating feeling. No putting eye. Only for you, not for me. Then no, I won't have any. You know, we're quite old-fashioned, <laughs> just the way we approach life. Our friends and family are really important. But the most extraordinary thing about him is that he's quite ordinary. <laughs> I actually mean that in the nicest way possible. These ones are hard today. Typical. <laughs> Just today or every day? Yeah, well. I think you've got to be competitive to make the top. Oh, yeah. She's definitely competitive. Here we go. We've got one. We're very competitive, but it's no not quite first to get ready out the door, you know. I don't often win, if I'm totally honest, but you try beat him and let me know how you get on. I started to become a bit more aware that, you know, I'd had my blinkers on and not allowed anyone anywhere near me. I love what I do, but rugby's not everything. And, you know, it took me a while to, to understand that, I suppose. Who potentially could have won the thing, haven't made the quarterfinals. For England, it was never meant to end like this. The boys all see that, and I think that adds a little bit of reality and tension. No, because we'll, we'll probably, you'll, you'll banter, you'll get that. Feel us, we feel like we're not quite nailing it. And the fact the boys are honest, I think shares that problem when you go, well, okay, we've got to make sure we keep each other in the present moment. Can you believe it? We are playing the French at Cardiff again. Now, I've been around the players the last 24 hours. You notice a definite edge in this All Blacks team. This is knockout football, and it is France. Ken, uh, you played in 2007 in Cardiff, same team, same stadium. Uh, has that been spoken about at all? It's special because we we we, um, we won against the the, the All Blacks. I think that there's not so many teams who won against them. And uh, especially in the French team history. And I think that French people really like this kind of moment. Can you, be, can you describe what a French versus All Black means as a team? There's been a great relationship between the two countries for a long, long time. And apart from the Rainbow Warrior, you know, we've probably been on the same page most of the time. Steve, you've got more older players than. The thing your old players bring you, if they're in form and our guys are in form, is experience. And you can't buy that. You know, when you're under the pump, you need people in that group that can cope with it. I'm aware that people are saying it's a chance to revisit 2007. We've actually discussed how many games he might have left. Potentially, he's got three. It could be one, so this could be the last game. And the only way of dealing with that situation is to actually focus on this as the last game, because then there's no regrets. If the last game you have for the All Blacks is at the World Cup, you're either going to be extremely happy or extremely disappointed. There's no real in-betweens, is there?
you could get scared of this weekend or embrace it. You know, that's uh, this is the, the 50 foot wave. You know, I've been waiting for. And uh, yeah, there's the odd moment where you feel we but uh, I feel we bit on edge. But uh, then I'm going to remember that I want to be here. I want to be in these situations. So uh, it's it's exciting. I just want to get there. I just want to bring it on. Here we go, last 10. Last 10 on Alpha, 3, 2, 1. Coming out to one. We continue our build-up to this quarter-final of Rugby World Cup 2015. The All Blacks and Cardiff again against the French. Yes, there is a glitch in the matrix. This is one of those games that spooks New Zealand fans. Which side are we in? I knew that the intensity was going to be up a massive level and you, know, you had that question, like, are we going to be able to turn the tap on and hit it the way we needed to? So that's what put me a bit on edge and, and I know the team was a little bit nervous as well. Les Bleus of France, the All Blacks of New Zealand have moved in for the night. Who will be left standing? going on out here? In the second half, they certainly knew that they were beaten, and our boys were running around with some smiles on their faces. Look at them. It's not often you see captain tackles get up and clap. This is a rout. People have been asking when the real All Blacks were going to stand up. I think we have our answer. their highest ever score over France and given the significance of the game, the venue, the history, uh, you can't ask for much more than that. The guys that were there in 07, you know, I had a couple of emails just to say thanks. Uh, so, you know, it was quite significant in that regard. Sumptuously grey clouds about Twickenham right now. What we're seeing on the pitch with them, um, what, six and a half minutes to go. Well, there'll be no surprise at what's happened here this afternoon. This is as tight as it comes. South Africa within one score. At the moment, New Zealand lead by two. Now, South African voices screaming in hope. Say that New Zealand was running the clock down now, they'll be so keen just to hold on, hold on. two coaches they are firm friends the game could have gone either way and we're just thankful and humbled that we have been given the opportunity to go through the final next week
obviously just one thing that just was so impressive was the way that New Zealand ran down that clock in that last nine minutes and were just so controlled and, and so composed. Oh, yeah, all well, experience allows that to happen and we've probably got the greatest skipper in the world but we won't get ahead of ourselves there. And it's ironic, in 207, you know, as a young captain, he was uh, criticised a lot. And, and I know that hurt him. And he's grown. What you are seeing is the two best teams in the world, both in really good form, going to play 80 minutes of football, and it's going to be tight. Now their team is on the verge of history, not just this possible third title, but also the opportunity to become the first to retain the cup. As a little fella, I just imagined running around, chasing the ball with all that jersey on. And what I imagined, it was better. It was one of the best things you can do, is uh, you pull that jersey on and run out for your country. Like that's, that's what gives you goosebumps. Smith, Conrad Smith, Aaron Smith, here he comes, McCall, Miller Scudder, absolutely typical. Goes for the drop goal. And he's on 
the edge for Carter. Carter for New Zealand. Oh, it's going to be close. It's there. And I was like, this is the last time. Last time I'll wear an all that jersey. I still don't want it to end, to be honest. Um, look, at the moment, I'm still part of this team. I'm going to enjoy today, and, you know, how could you get enough of this? The guys that are moving on, uh, we all had a chance to, to have a chat, just to reflect a wee bit on what it's meant. When you play, you don't play for anything but to earn the respect and the trust of your mates beside you. And just the fact that you're never going to be able to sit in that circle again after a test, because that's a pretty special thing that you can't explain to anyone what that feeling is. And we had a tight bunch of blokes that you'd trust. And that's, you know, what I've been hugely proud to have been a part of and, uh, and be able to lead. Physically, I could carry on, but it's the mental side that I know that I don't want to be here longer than I should. And you know, I've been doing it for 15 years, 140 something times. Uh, 
it just gets to the point where you know that you don't need to do that anymore. I always wondered when I've talked to people when I was younger, they said, oh, you'll know. And I was like, how do you mean you'll know? But you do. Yep, I'm done.